How about that cigar? And thanks so much for watching our live coverage of the 2021 PCA Trade Show. Cigar, guys, we are live again at PCA 2021 here with Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust, Mr. Steve Saka. How's it going, brother? It's me. I'm here. <laughs> so day two is here. Day two is upon us. The trade show has been rolling like crazy since yesterday morning. How has everything gone, you know, so far? It's absolutely sucked. It's been the worst thing ever. In fact, I, I don't even know why I'm here. All right. We'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching. No, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's. You tell me you're walking the show for, I mean, how is it? Are we busy? Are we not busy? What are we? We're not as busy as, as I was hoping we would be, at least maybe not today. Yesterday was really busy for, I'd say the first half of the day. Were you seeing the same kind of thing? We've just been busy all the time. So I only see my little world. That's true. Yeah. So I don't get out of yeah, but but one of the things, and we kind of said this at TPE also is, honestly, we're just so glad to be back together again. You know, cigar smoking is a contact sport, and we just like to be together with people, smoking cigars, swapping stories. It's social. Yeah, it's always been social. Yeah, it's always been about camaraderie and friendship and yada yada yada. Yeah, yeah, it's just inherent to cigar smoking, and in turn, cigar smokers. So yes, yeah. this is our more natural environment. Yeah. And we've been seeing a lot of the cool stuff you've been doing on social media for the last week or so, uh, kind of talking about the stuff you're, you have leading up. So give us a rundown of what you have going on with, uh, with Dunbarton right now. All right. Well, we have three new product releases for this year. Um, two of them are line extensions. The first of which is in addition to the Mike Rita Tricky Traka. It's a small format. It's uh, called the number 448, which stands for 4 by 48 It's the same size as the Gordita in the blue. So this is basically that same Vitola, but in the red. Um, it's probably the strongest of the lines, the one that's the most punchy. If you like really strong cigars, you'll probably enjoy this one very much. If you don't like strong cigars, I wouldn't recommend buying it. It's really just not for you in any and way. And that's, so. people know, I've said this multiple times, even on the show, that uh, in the original meat Carita, that was my absolute, still is my favorite size. For a lot of people, this this isn't exactly the size of the original firecracker. Those were three and a half by fifty. This is four by forty eight. I'm biased. I like the way it smokes better in this shape than that shape, even though it's only a half an inch and two ring gauges. It just lasts longer. Okay. You know the the pack is a little bit denser on it. A little bit of extra length. It makes it into a, a 50, 60 minute smoke if you're smoking it coolly, where the firecracker, sometimes you could plow through one of those in about 35 minutes, yeah. depending. So Nice, nice. And then you've also got uh, this beautiful new uh, Paladin de Saka. Yes, the Pal Vanna White. The Paladin de Saka. <laughs> so what Paladin de Saka is, um, as I'm off to do, I'll make a blend. And I'll smoke it for a year or two once it's commercially available. And then I'll kind of go, huh, what if I did this or what if I did that? And I go back and I tweak it. I mean, I did it in Sober Mesa with Elegante, Short Churchill. I did it in Todos Las Dias with Vic Lonsdale. I did it with Miki Rita. That's how we got to Miki Rita Tricky Traka. So it's no different with Sin Compromiso. Um, I started making a blend for myself that's just a little stronger, a bit more robust. Um, change the initial proportions on what we originally have ingredient wise. And we've also incorporated some very high grade Pennsylvania seed leaf tripa into it. And uh, it just makes it richer, heavier, thicker, denser, more robust. It's stronger, but it's not like uh, super peppery stronger. It's just a little bit more fuller body kind of experience. And a couple other changes because of that heavier nature, I was on. So noticing that it was giving a little bit of bite to it. And for me, I don't want Sin Compromiso to ever have bite. Part of what Sin is about is for it to be smooth. So I ended up taking the cigar and doing a firm press on it because all of the other Sin Compromisos have what I call a semi-press or a semi-prensado. But by doing a full press on these, it slows down the combustion, which makes it smoke a little cooler. So it takes that little bit of bitter biting back note out of the pen seed leaf and just lets the flavor of that tobacco come through. And then in addition to that, uh, we aged them a full year. And, uh, nice. and then uh, we charge so much money for them that people are going to bitch about the price, but I don't care. <laughs> don't buy it. Don't and smoke. What's the length on the? It's a 7 by 52. Okay. But because of the full prensado, it ends up feeling more like a 49 almost in the mouthfeel. Yeah. You know, so. And we are only initially uh, selling 1,000 boxes of this. So. Okay. It'll just go to our best 
notes. So it's still got, like you said, it's still got that, that smoothness, but with all the power behind it. Yeah, it's just a bit more rich, you know, a little bit more full. So, okay. and that's the Syncompromiso palette in the song. Beautiful. And then the thing that most people are talking about the show is our new core release. Um, and that is uh, Stillwell Star. Um, Stillwell Star is a rather unique product. Um, for almost three decades, actually a little over three decades, I've been a closet pipe smoker. Um, it's not something I talk about. It's not really on brand. And I've always been a cigar smoker first, right. but I've always been a pipe smoker. Um, but pipes, you know, they require a lot of fiddling and a lot of work and packing and tamping and lighting. And I'm also lazy. So I would take some of my favorite pipe tobaccos and I would just incorporate them casually into blends for me to smoke. Okay. A couple of years ago, I ran into a gentleman that uh, wanted to compliment me on my cigars. Thank you very much. Okay. And uh, his name was Jeremy Reeves. And I was kind of like, Jeremy Reeves, that's really familiar to me. Are you Jeremy Reeves from Cornell and Deal? Yeah. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, so you're the head blender at Cornell and Deal. And it's like, yeah. I was like, I love your stuff. I smoked your Pirate Kick. I smoked your Bayou Morning. I smoked your Oriental Silk. It's like, I was as much a fan of his work as he was of mine. And I told him that I was doing this thing casually. And it really intrigued me. I was like, hey send me some of those. I'm curious, you know, what they smoke like and just kind of started from there. So, you know, last year was COVID year. Couldn't go to Nicaragua, but I could go to long South Carolina where they have their pipe tobacco factory, where they make all their boutique pipe tobaccos and uh, spend some time with uh, Jeremy and his team. And uh, we made, uh, we made a lot of pipe tobacco blends. Uh, probably from beginning to end, maybe 140. I don't even know kind of lost track. It was a lot of pipe smoking. Yeah. Um, but we settled on four that were custom created to be incorporated into long filler premium cigars. And then I went and took those tobaccos that we settled on. And then I built a cigar around each of them to try to showcase those pipe tobaccos. Okay. So it's a cigar first, but the pipe tobaccos are evident. They're present. You can tell. And, there's four basic ones that we're starting with. We're starting with an aromatic, which is that sweet, you know, pillowy soft, smells of chocolate, vanilla. It has a sweet tip on it, that one, because okay. the sweetness actually really helps with the blend. Okay. The other three are much more traditional pipe tobacco blends, um, not an aromatic style. We have a navy blend, and we have a uh, bayou blend, which is a kind of a vapor Virginia Perique style. And we also have a classic English it's a heavy Latakia lover's style, you know, and they have all the bells and whistles, the Burleys and the Redstone, Virginia. And depending on each one of the individual four cigars, it's really four totally unique, different smoking experiences. Um, what I love about it is I think for the cigar guy, they're just really interesting cigars. Um, and I think if you didn't tell someone when they smoked the Bayou or in English, they'd be like, wow, this is really good, but it's different. And they won't even recognize it. But I think if you're a pipe smoker and you smoke it, I think that these flavors will be like almost instantly recognizable. They'll go, oh, wow, this is a Perique Vapor blend. Oh, wow, this is an English style blend. Oh, wow, this is a Navy blend, which is what I wanted. I wanted for the real hardcore pipe guys to see that in it. Yeah. But I also wanted the real hardcore cigar guys to get an experience that they maybe have never had. And one of the things that I find very interesting just is I'm been a closet pipe smoker. I'm amazed at how many people here at the trade show, they also turn out that they occasionally smoke pipes too. And uh, yeah, so, we, yeah, we do. Definitely. So uh, yeah, the, uh, I kind of look, this is a, this is an out on the limb project, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a little, I mean, what's like it. But it's, it's, it's cool because it's, uh, I think I'll say for myself, I won't speak for anybody else. It's something that, that I found was, unexpected yet it kind of makes sense from you know because you're not just i mean as much of a cigar guy as you are and so many decades in the business you're a tobacco guy yeah. you really love, love the history love tobacco, about, yeah the experience of it and this is look i'm not inventing the pipe tobacco cigar yeah. john t's are pipe tobacco cigars right yeah. a, a variety of manufacturers sell a lot of pipe tobacco cigars they don't tell consumers are pipe tobacco cigars but right. they are but they're made with 
average materials. They're made with run-of-the-mill bulk pipe tobaccos that are available commercially. This is something where we start from the ground up and we only use the very best of the best on his side and we only use the very best of the best on my side and we put the two together. And um, I think it's just, I think it's different. I think it's unique. Yeah. I think it's something that if you want to take a walk someplace that you've never walked before, it's an interesting project. And I'm hoping that when the purest of both sides smoke it, that they'll also appreciate the value, yeah. be the pipe guys or be the cigar guys. But right. I imagine I'll catch a lot of flack for it too, yeah. you know, cause it's just well, not, it's not traditional. Yeah. And I think, I think that's actually something that people are starting to, we're starting to see people change their minds about, uh, experimental i don't know if i'm using the word right but experimental uh, projects experiencing different things with within your regular kind of cigar uh style that you smoke and i think a lot of people are because maybe because people have had extra time they're not just smoking more cigars or more pipe tobacco maybe they're branching out a little bit and this could be something they could use for that ultimately i mean you're gonna have to ask me in a year Right now, we're, I know that we are selling a lot. Yeah. I know the retailers are very excited about it. I know the consumers that are talking to them are very excited about it. Yeah. So I know that everybody is going to have the opportunity to try this. Yeah. And then we'll see, was it a success or was it a failure? Uh, I don't have any control over that. All I can do is make the very best product possible, make it available, and, and hope for the best. I think there's merit in it. I hope other people find merit in it, but I won't know that. Well, one of the oh, actually, I, w I wanted to know about the with the Stillwell Star, the four different blends. Are they all the same size and format cigar? What I did is I made them all Toros six by fifty two, and the wrapper and binder on all of them are identical because I did not want that to enter into the equation for the cigar smoker. I wanted them to focus on how the pipe tobacco impacts the cigar because look you could make the argument that had i made the aromatic with a connecticut shade wrapper i probably would sell 10 times more of it right but look there's time for that in the future i can make another we actually have another aromatic actually done aromatic 43 okay that actually is a connecticut shade the way it's currently blended up but i'm not ready to release that yet let's see if any of this sells before we start talking about what's next but i wanted this to be a very simple thing for consumers to look at because normally when you launch a new brand, a consumer smokes a Robusto, he just tries a Robusto. Uh, the guy smokes Coronas, he tries the Corona. This is kind of a product where you're almost kind of, you're almost, whether you want to or not, you're kind of stuck smoking all four because you're just kind of curious. You know what I mean? You want to see what do you like and what do you not like? And maybe you'll like something you didn't think you were going to like. Uh, I mean, look, I, and I think for a lot of, and a lot of people, Gary Pesh from Old Virginia was sitting with me before he sat down. Uh, Gary is an old school class A tobacconist. And he was kind of like, I didn't know when I heard about this, but he smoked an English 27. He goes, wow, I'm really surprised. He goes, this is way more than I thought it could possibly be. And, and that's one of the reasons why I've been so, I wasn't trying to tease so much as I know that this cigar is going to cause a lot of discussion and everyone's going to have an opinion and some of the opinion is going to be very positive and some of the opinion is going to be very negative, but all the people that have very positive and very negative opinions, none of them have actually smoked the fucking cigar yet. Right. Yeah. And it'd be nice to say, Hey, wait until you smoke it, then give your two cents on it. But we live in America. Yeah. That ain't happening. Right. And in an age of social media. So, I mean, you're already going to have people pronouncing it the best selling cigar ever. At the same time, you have other people saying it's dead on arrival, right? And the truth is, neither one of them are right because we don't have a clue. Right. And in the end, we'll know that answer going into next summer. Look, I never thought that I would. I made a mild Connecticut shade cigar because it was missing in my portfolio. A guy would come to an event and say, hey, I like to smoke mild blonde cigars. And I had nothing to sell him. So I go through the effort of trying to make the best mild shade cigar that I possibly can. I was really happy with the work. I never expected that brulee would be as popular as brulee is. I mean, here it is two years later, and I have never fulfilled the backorders on brulee. There's never been a single moment where I've sent as many cigars as I had on order. 
in two years time. How can you project that? You know what I mean? You don't know and you don't have any control over it because in the end, the consumers decide. Yeah. Well, and one of the things that I find interesting and I like the way that you put it about the Stillwell star is even in the different blends, even, even with the, the, you know, the different varieties of pipe tobaccos in them, you made them to still smoke like a cigar. Yes. Well, they're cigars first. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I think that's, uh, at least for me as a cigar smoker and loving to try new things. And I know so many people who love to try new things, but at the same time, when you light up a cigar, we sort of have this expectation in our, this, this subconscious expectation in our brains that we want it to at least smoke like a cigar. But that's even true of, I mean, look at a product like Sweet Jane or a product like Java. I mean, there's a huge consumer base for those products and to ignore them doesn't make sense to me. At the same time, I'm not going to make that style of cigar because I don't smoke that style of cigar. So it's not in keeping with what I do. But this is something that I do, you know, and does it straddle into that territory? For some consumers, they're going to think, absolutely, Saka has jumped the shark and gone to the dark side. And then there's going to be other people, particularly guys that are really into pipes and understand the amount of work and effort and all the dedications put into making the high-end pipe tobaccos, not the Bochum Riffs and the Carter Halls and all of that stuff that you buy at the drugstore, but the really top-of-the-line stuff there are just as equally pipe geeks as there are cigar geeks. Okay. And they're into all of that, you know, and what, one of the things, and you, like you said, that what were, was that 143 different blends before you landed on the four? Yeah. About that. And that's one of the things that I've noticed. And I barely even dip my toe in the world of pipe tobacco, but combinations with, with, with casings and, and varietals, it's, it's, it's mind boggling. The ways you can, you can stove it, you can cabin dish it, you can air press it. You Just even pressing the tobaccos after they're made has on how they actually taste. Yeah. So two of the tobaccos that we use, are we use them as pressed crumble cakes because I want those tobaccos pressed because it changes the way the English smokes and it changes the way the Navy smokes. To have a really good Navy blend, it really, it really needs to be caked. You know what I mean? Look, caking it does not make sense for cigars. So we go through the work of caking it to then uncake it. But it does change the way the blend tastes and the way it smokes. So for me, going through doing the press cakes is an important step in the process, even though for what I do with it, it makes it rather inconvenient. But this isn't about what's the most convenient or the most economical. It's about this is the best foot forward that you can put. You know. So the big thing that people want to know, we want to know too, is uh, – when can these products be expected in uh, brick and mortar shops? Look, everything is really behind production wise. As you guys probably know, running around the show, not a lot of people are launching new stuff because it's a really difficult environment right now. Um, the tricky trackers will probably be hitting shelves sometime September, early October. Uh, the Sin Compromise will Paladin to Saka will probably be like late October ish, and Stillwell will probably be November. So these are all towards the tail end. Just the fact that I'm even here at the trade show with them is a miracle. Yeah. I mean, I mulled 2,400 cigars into my luggage on Saturday from Nicaragua, and I had I not gotten those through, none of these samples would even be here. So yeah, that was uh, we we saw you tell that story on on uh, Facebook, and and the the fact that it just worked out the way it did with the guy at, at customs. That was uh, it was it was. I don't want to get that guy in trouble. I probably said too much already. Yeah. Hope he doesn't lose his job. No, that was, it's, it's a fun experience. Like we said, being back together with everybody smoking cigars again and just swapping stories. And we're excited for, you know, for the industry to just keep fl flourishing, hopefully. And for all the stuff that we've been, uh, we've been excited about to just go out in the market and explode. And we hope the same thing for these products. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. it. So guys, we appreciate you spending time with us here, as always, at the trade show. Uh, look for products from Dunbar Tobacco and Trust. If you don't have them at your local brick-and-mortar shop, ask for them. You tobaccos. That guy sucks. <laughs> and as always, guys, we will be here at the trade show the next couple of days. So keep watching our coverage, and we'll see you soon. Thanks.